In 1969, the United States government officially announces it will stop investigating UFOs. But trust in the government is about to hit rock bottom. The 1972 Watergate scandal opens the door for a 1974 amendment to the Freedom of Information Act, granting the public unprecedented access to secret government files. They reveal that while the U.S. Department of Defense may have closed its public investigation into UFOs, hundreds of well-documented sightings still defy explanation. The declassified documents also reveal that multiple government agencies have been hiding important UFO sightings for decades. Join us as we investigate why top secret government agencies still study UFOs, but keep their findings classified. A global effort has begun. Secret files hidden from the public for decades, detailing every UFO account, are now available to the public. We are about to uncover the truth behind these classified documents. Find out what the government doesn't want you to know. Unsealed Alien Files. Exposing the biggest secret on planet Earth. In 1975, UFO sightings spike in all corners of North America, many near military installations. It's documented that unidentified craft were getting into restricted air zones, even above nuclear installations. Who or what is entering restricted airspace? And what is the U.S. military doing to stop it? Unsealed case file, the Worksmith incident. Oscoda, Michigan, October 30th, 1975. On the shores of Lake Huron, civilian and military personnel witness strange lights in the sky. In 1975, in Wordsmith Air Force Base, there was an incident that was described as unidentified craft being seen outside of this military installation uh, that shouldn't have been there. And so they had a tanker in the air that went to go check it out to try and see and determine what this craft was. But as the tanker approaches the unidentified craft, something extraordinary happens. There were very bright lights, but when the military tried to fly towards them, they switched off um, in sync. As the tanker apparently approached these objects, they did confirm it, not only visually, but they confirmed it by radar. So whatever was there was actually there. Despite visual and radar confirmation, the Wurtsmith incident, like many of its kind, would have remained hidden from the public without the Freedom of Information Act. Officials dismissed the incident as lights from an Apache helicopter, but the report leaves more questions than answers. Was it truly a helicopter? Or was that just simply the label and the best definition that they could put on the craft? Cases like the Wurtsmith incident mark an important change in the way UFOs are studied and reported inside the government. But to understand why, we must go back nearly a decade. Unsealed case file, the Condon Report. In 1966, Edward Condon led what has now become known as the Condon Committee. And what they were doing was analyzing what the cases were that were still unidentified in the Blue Book system. And in 22 years, they investigated 12,768 sightings. Only 701 of those remained unidentified. But many critics argue the Condon Committee's findings are a foregone conclusion. His final conclusions in that report were that UFOs were nothing to be bothered with, nothing to be in, and, and his other conclusion was that from 1947 till 1968, when it was released, no scientific information, nothing of importance could be gleaned from the subject of UFOs. In 1969, the U.S. government terminated Project Blue Book and said, we are no longer interested in investigating UFO sightings. There's something to this phenomenon that the intelligence community knows is important, but doesn't want us to know about. Coming up, we investigate one of the most important international UFO reports ever declassified. This is Unsealed Alien Files. In 1969, the U.S. government shut down their official Air Force investigation called Project Blue Book. 
claiming that studying UFOs has added nothing to scientific advancement. But by the mid-1970s, public interest in UFOs is only getting stronger. And one incident in 1976 shocked civilians and the military to their core. Unsealed case file, the Tehran incident. Tehran, Iran, September 19th, 1976. In September of 1976, in the middle of Tehran, Iran, uh, an airbase there was receiving quite a few phone calls about a mysterious object that was seen hovering over the city. Iranian Air Force generals scrambled two American-made F-4 Phantom fighter jets to intercept. But just as the first pilot realizes that the object is unlike anything he has ever seen before, his controls mysteriously shut down. He is called back to base, and the second F-4 takes a closer look. As it got the same amount of distance as the first plane, something different happened. A second UFO appeared from the first one. Then all of a sudden, the second UFO jetted forward towards the incoming F-4 Phantom jet. So the next thing that he does is he arms his AIM-4 missile, flips the switch, and he's gonna fire back. He goes to fire in three, two, one, everything shuts off. He has no control over the fire. He sees an incoming object, and he can't do a thing. The pilot fears for his life and takes evasive action, throwing his plane into a dive. As he's seeing this object come towards him, again, assuming it was a missile, before it impacts his craft, it makes a dip, it loops around his aircraft, and rejoins the original UFO, as pretty much to say, I don't think so, don't even try it. The UFOs maneuver in a way that defy any known aircraft capabilities of the time. There was actually a third UFO that appeared as the pilot saw it come out of the side of the original craft, then goes towards Earth and actually lands on the ground. It says to have cast a large light about a third of a kilometer in diameter on the ground. American officers are secretly dispatched to Tehran where they conduct a lengthy interview with the Iranian pilots, officers, and air control personnel. The report is sent to top-level agencies within the U.S. government. I've never seen a UFO document be forwarded that widely. The CIA, the NSA, the FBI, and again, even the White House received a copy of this report. Why does the U.S. government take such an intense interest in the Tehran incident, seven years after the Air Force said that studying UFOs does not further scientific knowledge? Obviously, if a UFO can disable a fighter jet in Tehran, it can do it in the United States. Does the government take it seriously? Absolutely. This proves beyond a doubt that the UFO phenomena was real. This proves beyond a doubt that they were still interested in it. And this proves beyond any doubt that this was technology that we don't even have today, decades later. Experts today still cannot explain the Tehran incident. But the most fascinating part to me is not necessarily the case itself, but it's the fact that we can read it. If you couple this case and you put it next to the hundreds and hundreds of blacked out cases on UFOs that are blacked out from top to bottom, if you could read this one, what in the heck is under the black in this one? Encounters such as the Tehran incident raise questions about how much the government may be hiding from the public. In 1977, a leading independent UFO researcher named William Spaulding files a lawsuit against the CIA for violating the Freedom of Information Act. Spaulding, like a lot of people in the UFO community, was fairly suspicious of the government and he didn't believe it. So he pushed and pushed until finally it went to a lawsuit and the CIA was forced by order of a judge to look for records. The court forces the CIA to release thousands of pages of UFO files, files they officially claimed did not exist. William Spaulding's 1977 lawsuit marked a fundamental change in how the UFO community used the Freedom of Information Act to go after this issue aggressively. This was such a huge embarrassment that the then director of the CIA asked his own officials in a panicked memo, are we in UFOs? 
CIA, Department of Defense, and United States Air Force documents reveal that in 1975, reliable military personnel repeatedly witnessed UFOs over weapons storage areas and nuclear missile facilities. Among the UFO incidents listed in the declassified files is the Wurtsmith sighting. Why is it that military personnel are always told don't talk about what you saw to anybody? And the answer is obvious. If you're trying to deliver a message to the public that these things are nothing to worry about, you don't want your employees going around talking about them like they're real. Up next, the pressure to be more transparent about UFO investigations leads to the release of one of the most compelling military sightings in the history of UFO investigation. This is Unsealed Alien Files. Closed captioning provided by Declassified documents made available by the U.S. Freedom of Information Act of 1974 reveal that, despite claims to the contrary, the U.S. government is still actively investigating UFOs. But one case involving high-ranking United States Air Force personnel stationed in England becomes a watershed sighting in the history of ufology. Unsealed case file, the Rendlesham Forest Incident. December 1980. The Rendlesham Forest UFO incident took place in December 1980 in the United Kingdom, but involved two United States Air Force bases. These were actually two of the most uh, important and sensitive bases in the entire NATO military alliance. And this was a time of great tension in the Cold War. For three nights at the twin Air Force bases, RAF Bentwaters and RAF Woodbridge, witnesses investigate a remarkable close encounter. And on the first night of what was actually three nights of consecutive activity, uh, this UFO landed. Security police and law enforcement personnel in the military went out and encountered a small triangular craft which had landed in a, a clearing. One of the airmen gets close enough to report seeing strange symbols on the side of the UFO and even claims to touch the craft. After a while, it rose slowly up above the ground. It cleared the tops of the trees and it accelerated away at immense speed. On the third night, Deputy Base Commander Colonel Charles Halt joins the investigation. He threw together a small team of military and he went out into the forest, in his own words, to debunk this UFO nonsense and to put this whole ridiculous story to bed for once and for all. But nothing could prepare Colonel Halt for what he was about to see. Over a period of some hours, saw extraordinary activity in the sky including an object which fired a pencil-thin beam of light down at his feet during his own sighting. It was his habit to carry with him a small handheld cassette recorder on which he documented his observations. This we have on audio tape, and that tape has survived. The tape, recorded by Colonel Halt during the encounter, is considered one of the most compelling pieces of UFO evidence in history. Oh, here, here he comes from the south. He's coming toward us now. Now we're observing what appears to be a beam coming down to the ground. Taken collectively, the Rendlesham Forest incident is the most compelling, best evidenced, and I think significant UFO incident in the world. But the significance goes far beyond eyewitness accounts. There was indeed uh, both a Royal Air Force and a NATO report that the radar establishments did indeed have an uncorrelated target. And they measured the radiation at this site and the radiation had spiked. There's radiation where it shouldn't be, at the edge of a forest. Why? After the incident, Halt makes an official report to the UK Ministry of Defense, a seminal document now known as the Halt Memo. It's an extraordinary document. It's got this very low-key title, Unexplained Lights. 
When you actually read the thing, it talks quite clearly about a landed metallic craft and about the physical evidence in terms particularly of the radioactivity levels. There is absolutely no doubt that these documents are the government's own investigation of this. So did the Rendlesham incident actually occur? Yes, it absolutely did occur. Um, multiple witnesses, we had an object on the ground, we had radiation, we had the deputy commander of the base involved who actually saw it. Despite the compelling evidence, the UK military concludes that the Rendlesham Forest sightings are an optical illusion. But 20 years later, under mounting public pressure, the UK government commissions an in-depth study of many UFO sightings across the country. Unsealed case file, the Condine Report. Project Condine was a UK government intelligence study into the UFO phenomenon. The final report was stamped secret UK eyes only. The Condine Report tries to answer questions that have lingered since the Cold War. Could UFO sightings be Soviet technology? Are they our own top secret black projects? Or is it really just atmospheric anomalies? One of the other fascinating things is that uh, it actually dropped the term UFO and replaced it with UAP, Unidentified Aerial Phenomena. So when we use phrases like UAP, it steers people almost away from a nuts and bolts interpretation that we're dealing with solid structured craft and it focuses the debate on for example exotic atmospheric plasmas which was one of the project condine uh, conclusions coming up we uncover the motivating force behind covert government ufo investigations and find out what's really at stake Classified documents prove that government agencies have been investigating UFOs long after they claim to no longer be interested in the phenomena. But when it comes to disclosure, the National Security Agency looks like it has come to the end of the line. The National Security Agency has really shifted towards uh, kind of more of the spying role. They're the ones that go out and try and figure out what the other uh, enemies of the United States of America are actually doing. According to John Greenwald, the NSA has admitted it hasn't been keeping its records in good order. Under the Freedom of Information Act, you can request what's called a mandatory declassification review. Greenwald sends a request to review 100% of all UFO records that the NSA has released. After waiting a considerable amount of time, the National Security Agency told me under the Freedom of Information Act that they lost 100% of those files. What kind of secret is so compelling that even the documents pertaining to its existence have been erased? Having done this job from the inside, I've met a number of people, uh, politicians, military officers, intelligence community personnel, who are absolutely convinced that some UFOs do indeed involve visitation of extraterrestrial spacecraft and indeed entities. If it takes 30, 40, 50 years for these secrets to be declassified, it's possible that our children, our grandchildren, will see a whole new batch of evidence come to light. Have governments made contact with an extraterrestrial being? And if they have, why are they keeping it a secret? This is Unsealed. Alien Files, exposing the biggest secret on planet Earth.